When we speak of childhood, images of playful memories, unbridled joy, and the sheer innocence of exploration often come to mind. This wasn't the case for Yebakura game. For him, the very essence of existence revolved around mastering the art of the samurai. With the rising sun, while others his age were probably lost in the world of dreams or play, Yebo was perfecting his stance, honing his techniques, and embedding the principles of Bushido into his very soul. His father, a stalwart in the way of the samurai, ensured that every day was a new lesson, not just within the confines of their dojo, but extending to the vast, unpredictable terrains of nature. As in foretold by fate, the trajectory of Yaba's life takes a monumental turn with the arrival of Musashi Miyamoto. Esteemed and revered, Miyamoto was no ordinary samurai. His tales, especially the one about the seven orbs of power, were not mere stories but legends waiting to be realized. These orbs, carrying the potency to grant any wish, were not just mystical entities but represented a legacy, a pinnacle of power waiting to be claimed. And so, with a heart full of aspirations and a spirit unyielding, Yeba decided to tread on a path that many would deem treacherous. Every epic tale has its ensemble of characters, and in Yaba's journey, these characters weren't mere additions, but pivotal to the progression of his saga. Sayaka Mine, with her indomitable spirit, proved to be more than just a friend. She was a beacon of hope and strength. Her presence reminded Yeba that even in the darkest of times, a ray of human connection could illuminate the path. In stark contrast, the eccentricity of Shanasuk, the vulture with a human's intellect, added layers of wisdom interspersed with moments of comic relief. Yet, as is the case with every epic journey, adversaries lurk around every corner, ready to thwart our hero's progress. Amongst them, Takeshi Onomaru stood as a testament to the corruption of power. Initially an ambitious warrior, Onomaru's transformation post his encounter with the ogre's power rendered him into a figure of formidable darkness. He was no longer driven by honor, but by an insatiable hunger for power and dominance, making him the antithesis of Yeba's principles. The world of Kinyu Densetsu Yeba isn't merely restricted to the tangible. It delves into the domains of deities, where swords aren't just metal forged in fire, but embodiments of gods. Reijin Ken and Fujin Ken weren't just tools of battle. They were instruments of divine intervention, echoing with the roars of thunder and the whispers of the wind. The quest for the orbs wasn't linear. It transcended the realms of reality, leading Yeba to places where myths breathed life. The Dragon Palace, an epitome of ethereal beauty and grandeur, was one such place. But beauty often masks danger, and thus, amidst its grand halls and shimmering waters, Yeba encountered beings of ancient lore, testing his skills and resolve. While battles and quests formed the crux of Yaba's adventures, the manga delves deeper into the emotional spectrum of its characters. Every trial faced by Yaba wasn't just a physical confrontation, but an emotional and psychological one. With every orb collected, with every enemy vanquished, and with every ally made, Yaba matured, understanding the multifaceted nature of existence. To encapsulate Kenyu Densetsu Yaba isn't just a narrative, it's an experience. It masterfully interlaces the traditional ethos of Japan with a contemporary rhythm, rendering it both nostalgic and fresh. The roller coaster of emotions, from joy to sorrow, from anticipation to satisfaction, resonates with readers across ages, and therein lies its magic, making the legend of Swordmaster Yeba an undying saga in the annals of manga history.